Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today, we are going to geek out about all things leather grips. So I have two leather grip experts, throw a grip on it, Troy Lara and Chris Edwards. What's hey, up? <laughs> um, when deciding to have this chat, there was no one else that sh- I could think of that could answer all the questions about leather grips better than both of you guys, as I know you are both leather grip connoisseurs and... Oh. Enjoy that as an accessory to your rackets of choice. So let's get right into it. Tell me, what are the benefits of a leather grip? Troy, you want to give us a couple? Well, I will open up with the fact that Chris is probably the true leather aficionado because his hand actually comes in contact with the leather. The only time my hand comes in contact with the actual leather is when I'm wrapping it on. And then as soon as it's wrapped on, I put overgrip on top. So <laughs> I'm kind of like, I use the leather, but I actually don't feel the leather type of thing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, the tack of the leather and how it, some leathers get tackier as they get wet is a big factor for me. Whereas with Troy, he's going to enjoy some of the other benefits of the leather because it's going to be hidden under um, an overgrip. Yeah, but just um, like my benefits are the reason I, why I like them so much is just increasing that... Uh, firm feel of the handle where you really uh can feel the uh the beveled edges of the of the grip sort of the the eight different sides of the of the palette shape it really is pronounced with with the leather grip compared to most uh synthetic grips unless it's like a really really thin uh synthetic material grip but uh, i like that feel and i also do like uh, the added weight typically that it gives to the handle making or most of the time giving the racket a couple more points head light to the balance and a little bit more weight overall that's kind of the one thing that i um, think about when i'm using leather grips but like chris was saying uh he's definitely more in touch with the feel of the actual leather yeah i like the um i like the fact that i can feel the bevels more with a leather grip too um it does give me a firmer feel i feel more connected to the ball and michelle you know all about this it's like surfing without booties on you know so if you wear rubber booties when it's super cold, you can't feel the board as well. I said when that just today. <laughs> yeah, when you're shredding the knot. So yeah, for me, I just feel way more connected. And I can I can really feel every I mean you feel your tennis player, you feel through your hand. You know, your hand is what connects you to the racket. And so what connects your hand to the racket is really important. And um, you know, whether you're choosing a leather grip or another grip, having nice fresh grips, so you're not gripping the racket too hard is important for um, you know, protecting your arm, keeping your hand nice and relaxed and you swing smooth. And then I think feeling able to fill the bevels helps me do that a little bit. And then also, so I like to use two different kinds of grips. I've got a uh, fairway leather here. This one is the best when it comes to tack. I found, I haven't found anything better yet. Um, and when your hands sweats and the grip gets damp, they stay really tacky and it doesn't spin um, in my hand. If I was playing on the on the East coast and really heavy humidity when I'm really, I'm just going to drench the grip. So I'd probably just throw an overgrip on more to just soak up that sweat because I know I can change it out. Mm. Um, whereas with a leather grip, once it just gets really soaked, you, you know, you're pretty much done. And then the other one I like is the T-Dub leather grip. And um, I've got one in black here, but it also comes in tan and you can get it in different thicknesses. So if you like to feel the ridges, not just the bevels of the racket, but the, the seam of the grip as it goes up the handle, you can have more or less of that feel depending on the uh, the type of grip you go with. And so um, we got it in black as the newest addition to the T-Dub leather. Same great tack. It's not quite, they're not quite as tacky as um, the fairways, but they're pretty close. They're as, as close as I've hit and they're a really good price. Fairways are a little pricey. Um, so if you, especially if you're going to put an overgrip over it, I mean, this is dynamite leather. Yeah, I guess um, that opens up some questions. Do you notice a change in the color of the leather? So like the tan is like the most authentic version of a leather grip or because I know I I use a racket that comes with a leather grip, but that's a black leather grip. And it's mine's a little I found the Wilson um, leather grip on the RF97 to be a little slick, whereas I feel like that fairway feels more worn. I, I, I guess that's the right way to say it. Yeah, uh, Fairway put more tackiness. They put more additives into their leather, mm-hmm. I think, than um, other manufacturers. Whereas if you just have leather, it's going to get slick. Um, so you definitely need some tack in there. Um, there was one player back in the day who I remember used to like either pat them down with a damp towel or get them wet before he played. And I think it was using Fairways. 
back then um, because they do get nice and tacky once you get a bit of moisture in them. If you've got an older fairway, um, it can feel a little slick until you get it damp. And then the other thing you can do with a lot of people, you can take care of the leather too. You can clean it up. So if it gets a little grimy on the surface and obviously you're not going to feel as much tack, so you can, you can wipe it down and clean it up a bit. But to answer your question with the color, no, it's more of what they're adding. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to start like for if someone's never, ever tried a leather grip, never experienced playing with it, what are the things that they can expect? And blisters, <laughs> That's what blisters. I was gonna say. blisters <laughs> yeah. and calluses. Is that yeah. something to expect? <laughs> you have to get, you know, you have to condition your hand to get used to it. I think even on the, an overgrip, you're going to notice a firmer feel. You're going to feel those bevels a bit more. So they're going to you know, potentially dig into the hand. But if you're just going straight up leather, <laughs> um, yeah, I would hit with it in increasing increments, if that makes sense. So if, you know, you're going out and hitting with your body, you know, don't take it into a tournament and chew your hand up. When you're hitting with your practice partners, hit with it for 20, 30 minutes, put it down or put an overgrip on and then keep playing. Um, and you might notice like, if not during the hit, after the hit or the next day, that your hand is getting a little bit more sore than it normally would. But once you get those calluses built up, you're good to go. It's almost like uh, like they talk about like barefoot training or barefoot mm-hmm. running for runners, you know? Like they, they see people doing it and it, you know, trains mo- different muscles in your feet and it's a more natural thing. That's how we were put on this earth was barefoot, you know? But they say <laughs> don't go out there and just do it your first time and go for a mile run barefoot, you know, you got to like work your way into it. So similar thing with what Chris is saying is going straight into a leather and training your hand, so to speak. Um, For me, when I first started playing tennis, um, I actually really liked the firmer feel the better. And I think my hands were already kind of used to getting roughed up over the years because I played a lot of baseball. So like batting practice, the, the handles on the baseball bats aren't, always leather but they're pretty hard so taking batting practice like all day I'd get calluses and then throw in the football throw in the baseball like my hands were already pretty roughed up so like when I came to tennis the really spongy grips I was like I don't really like this soft stuff man this stuff's like this for wusses you know (laughs) (laughs) well and then that's another question let's say I'm a player I never used a a leather grip but I want to try it so I'm going to replace the grip on my racket what can I expect in terms of spec changes and do I have to be particular about the kind of leather grip that I'm getting? Am I going to expect the grip to get bigger or smaller or does it depend on which grip do I get? And like, is it even something that I would notice? So if I replaced a replacement grip with a leather grip, am I going to notice the, the leather adding weight to the racket typically yeah so typically speaking you can notice the overall increase in weight for me the racket just feels even though you're not really adding weight to the hoop or the head of the racket where usually it affects the twist weight and the plow through the most i still feel like the racket with that added weight from the leather grip gives it a little more stable and solid feel to the racket um in general kind of a rule of thumb is it usually increases the balance by like a point and a half to two points for most leather grips, some leather grips are a little heavier, might make it, you know, two to two and a half points or closer to three and some a little bit thinner and lighter, especially as I noticed like older leather grips as they thin out type of thing. But uh, yeah, usually you would expect a couple points more head light in the balance. And I think the weight usually goes up by like three tenths of an ounce. So I'm not exactly sure what that correlates to grams, but uh, say if your racket's like, 11.1 ounces strong, which is a pretty common spec. Um, it would end up being closer to like 11.3, 11.4 with the leather grip on there and a couple more points headlight. And they do, um, as Troy mentioned, they do bed down. So when you put a fresh leather grip on, um, and every any grip will do this, even the uh, you know the foam grips, the foam is going to compress over time too, so the handle is going to get a little bit smaller. Leather grip, uh, you're going to notice a difference, and I definitely notice a different difference. If I've got two rackets of one and got a newer leather grip on it, um, the newer one, the handle is going to feel just a smidge larger. And then the more you use the grip, it's going to compress and and uh, and settle in, as it were. And um, there's actually an interesting pro tour story I learned from Nate Ferguson at Priority One, who strings for you know Fed, Djokovic, um, all the greats, and uh, he was saying Sodling didn't like the feel of his grips when they bedded down. He liked that fresh leather grip and he got tired of them decreasing in size. And so Nate actually came up with a 
a foam palette. Um, this replicated the texture and the feel of a of a leather grip for his handle, and then he would obviously put his um, overgrip directly on that. And um, I'd always wondered about it. And then when I was over in Austria a couple of years ago filming brandography, the guys in the racket room had heard me talk about it in the past, and they brought out one of his rackets, and so I got to see the actual foam palette that Nate Ferguson created. So. If you don't have Nate Ferguson in your corner, you just got to <laughs> change out your leather grips a little bit more often. Um, but yeah, or, you know, just go with a, one of the thicker grips just so that, you know, when it does bed down, it's, it's going to feel just right. That must, that must be some secret to trying to beat Rafa at the French, man. You got to have a, you got to have a molded grip. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I saw, I think somebody on the message board or something posted a picture of what his like palette looked like on the solderling, the molded handle. And it's got mm -hmm. like, it's cool. Cause it's got like the little ridges in it, but it's all like a uniform color and just looks like it's made out of like clay or something. It's, it's pretty cool looking. That's yeah. That's so crazy. crazy. Wow. Um, and what's the best way to install a leather grip? I feel like it's a little intimidating. Um, if you've never done it before. <laughs> Yeah, the, the thing for me, um, ideally, and then this would probably with any grip, but especially with a leather, if possible, if you're really into your, you know, customizing and stuff, if you have a staple gun, a grip staple gun, which we, I think we have images of it on the site somewhere, but it, it's a little tiny staple that you'll see um, when you like remove a grip on a racket, the factory staples, but they're really tiny. That really does a, a whole lot of help to getting the start of the wrapping down because you can really sort of dig in and pull on it nice and tight. But I think that's one thing that uh, has helped me is kind of learning how to start to wrap it is really, you really have to pull it hard and tight to kind of get some of the creasing and the bubbling out of the wrap um, in the very beginning, especially like on a really flared butt cap where it's got like a, a really kind of steep, you know, kind of lift to the butt cap. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of harder because it, it makes the, the grip kind of bubble up even more, but pulling it really tight. So having a staple gun, I've kind of figured out a way over the years to use like double-sided tape or kind of wrap it, holding it down with my thumb. But the initial part is probably the hardest, just getting those creases out. But I don't know if Chris, did you notice anything when you put like fairways on or? Yeah. So fairways, um, probably the toughest to install. Um, you definitely want to use, um, a starting staple to, you know, so staple the, the, the tip of it and then double-sided tape also down the pallet is kind of a must for those. Otherwise you're going to get some grip separation uh, uh, throughout you, especially if you're a two-handed player, you know, I think that you can start to pull the grip apart in the middle there. And then the T-Dub leather ones that I use are a little easier to install. They've got nice adhesive backing on them. And so um, those go on. I do use a staple as, but you can get away without using a staple on those, but they get a nice, easy start. You know, ideally stapling it is the way to go. Not necessary, but definitely makes wrapping it easier. Um, that's a good question too. I know with some of my rackets, um, you had mentioned that it separates. Am I just screwed? Should I start all over? Do I rewrap? What's the situation when that happens? You can unwrap, unravel it. And then I would just put, you can put some you can have someone put some double-sided <laughs> tape on there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, my go-to is either like covering it up with an overgrip or switching rackets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely have noticed like on some of your older RFs, I know a couple of times when I strung them, I rewrapped the leather grip for you because there was already like some separation between the, the middle there where the two hands go or the two hands meet. Um, but yeah, double-sided tape really comes in handy and it's it's pretty much, so we've had people, or people ask what kind of double-sided tape. It's not like the clear office tape or like the scotch tape. It's more like, uh, we use more like a double-sided, almost like a masking tape. So it's about like an inch, roughly an inch wide and it's got that tan kind of color to it like a masking tape and that seems to work pretty well so like when i've rewrapped your rf 97s before michelle um i've unwrapped it and i just put like uh long strips uh vertically on the palette and usually do two to four sides to to pretty much cover up the palette and then wrap it kind of that's what what i've done with fairways as well i'll just add one thing it does sound like Oh my, you know, it's a lot of work. I got to put a staple in, I got to use double sided <laughs> tape, but it's kind of fun. You know, you should be having fun with it and you're tinkering with your racket, you're personalizing it. So I would say get into it, you know, do it the right way, learn how to do it the right way. And, you know, and then I think you'll really enjoy, you know, having that kind of like 
you know, mastering of your customizing your racket. Yeah. And um, Britt and Tiff joined me for a chat about uh, using smaller grips. And we kind of discussed how like, it's kind of overlooked, but your grip, and you already said this, Chris, but your grip is your your connection to the racket, that it's almost just as important to get that dialed in as your string setup. Absolutely. Yeah. There's not a ton, luckily, so it's not super confusing. So there's not a ton of options on the market, but are there any leather grips that, I mean, you guys have already referenced a few of your favorites, but like your favorite when it comes to maybe the thinnest or the best bevels or the best value. Um, maybe you can talk me through some of the options that the customers have. And I know like <laughs> at one point I was doing some research on the fairway grips and I think at least the best value, there's a blemish option on the website and I've seen the blemish grips. And it's really not, um, when I hear blemish, I think it means something's kind of like wrong with it, but it just might mean that maybe the, the logo didn't go on straight or whatnot. So I would say that's the best value, but I don't know. You guys might think otherwise. Yeah. The blems on the, um, the fairway, great way to go. They're a great deal. And you're getting the performance aspects of the fairway is unchanged. And so you actually have a couple of blems, um, in my, on my rackets and, I don't feel a difference. Um, yeah, man, you're getting that top shelf, top shelf taste. <laughs> right? You know, At the grocery outlet price. <laughs> the label was printed a little different, you know, but you're getting that top shelf quality, you know. And before you finish answering that question, maybe you guys can talk through the, the different options of fairways because it is a tiny bit confusing. So there's the fairway classic and that's size 48. And then there's the fairway double-handed 48, 15 by 15 slash 16, double-handed 48, 15 slash 16 blemish. And then there's the midsize modern 48, and that's seven slash eight. So talk me through that and explain, keep it simple. <laughs> so you can, um, you can control how long a grip is and how far it's going to go up the handle um, a couple of ways. You can make it longer, right? It's a longer piece of leather or you can make it wider. So when you wrap each time around, it covers more of the handle. That makes sense. So if you imagine your leather grip is this thick, it's going to cover this much of the handle every time it goes around. So you don't have to rotate it around as much. And if it's a, uh, if it's not as thick this way, um, you know, I'm talking like butt cap to tip um, dimension, then the, you've got to wrap that grip around more times because you're not covering as much of the handle. Um, so some people like that because you're going to get more ridges going up the handle, but you're obviously going to need a longer piece of leather or any grip to cover the entire handle to do that because you're not covering as much each time around. So you've got to look at the dimensions of both length and and that width to make sure, especially if you're using something like a Yonex, which has a yeah, pretty long handle, it's a plus length racket that has um, a longer handle. You want to make sure you've got a, enough grip to, to get to the top of the, the grip. What Chris was saying about the the width of the grip, you know, like each time that, you know, you wrap it, it covers up the handle. I tend to, me personally, I like the taller ones. So like in that case, I like the 15 16 which is almost an inch, slightly higher than the 7 8 um, just because I like less, um, less spirals or less uh, overlaps. Okay. So to speak. So if I could just have like the feel of the leather, like that hard feel without barely any no bevels. <laughs> feeling of the of the overlaps, that would be ideal for me. Whereas some people like them thinner because they like more ridges throughout the the feel of the handle. Okay. So it's really personal preference um, and what you prefer. Yeah. Like one thing, uh, like just to throw in there as a comparison is for the longest time, I didn't know that the original Turner grips were all the same length. It's just that the original you know, is, is so, I don't know, the exact dimensions is a little bit uh, shorter and then the XL gets a little fatter and the double XL is like super fat. Yeah. It covers like a couple inches up the handle almost. So yeah, I was like, holy smokes, they're all the same length. It's just different widths. Yeah. Cause I think everyone thinks XXL just means it's going to be that much longer in length instead of width. That makes sense. Yeah. You're just, you're still covering more of the handle each time you wrap it around, basically. So yeah, you don't have to have a longer grip, you just have a wider grip. Got it. 
And then back to the original question, um, talk me through some of the other brands right now. I'm looking at what we've got available. We've got Dunlop Leather, Babylot, Wilson, Turna, Vocal, Prince, Head, and Technofiber, and then T-Dub, of course, and Fairway. So are there any of those that stand out in certain departments for you or you just like always tried and true fairway? I know Tita private label is a great price point and value as well. Because I just use the lead. I mean, I do use overgrips every once in a while, mostly because sometimes I'm testing them. <laughs> but if given, you know, left to my own devices, I'm using the leather. For me, I'm fairway or Tita leather all the way. I haven't ventured out in the last couple of years from those. I'm just super happy with both those options. And when I have ventured out in the past two, I found some not to work as well when they get, you know, when you start to sweat, they start to feel a little bit slick. So I think it's, um, if you're going to play just the leather, it's it's more of a, a priority. But if you're going to put an overgrip on, less so. And I think the racket brands, um, the other brands are all going to be with the adhesive backing too. And so if you don't want to use the staple gun, um, like the T Dub leather, they're they're a good way to go. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan um, for of the T Dub private label. I mean, I'm putting an overgrip on it, so that's one main reason. But it's just a really good grip, really good bang for your buck, so to speak. Um, and I do like the fact that it gives you like we have all the dimensions listed, so length, width, and then even thickness. Um, I tend to prefer the thicker of the two T-Dub private labels. So there's a 1.5 millimeter thickness and a 1.3. If you like something thinner, um, I like the thicker just because I like to make the handle feel a little more substantial, a little heavier. And uh, I don't know the exact difference or if there is much, but I did try a black uh, T-Dub private label not too long ago. And that for some reason, I don't know if it maybe has dye in it that makes it feel that way, but it just felt a little more dense. So that could be a good way to go. Um, But as far as the other brands go, um, some things that stand stand out or have stood out over the years of just replacing them for customers or for people like you, Michelle, Um, definitely the Wilson leather grips, they tend to get really thin pretty fast. So I don't know if it's because they're maybe a little softer. Um, They also are pretty short as far as the like the width of them. So mm-hmm. there's a lot more spiral going on mm-hmm. with the Wilson, but uh, yeah, they, they tend to thin out pretty quick. So like by the time we're done play testing an RF 97 or after you you've used yours for quite some months, they, they get really, really thin almost to the point where it doesn't feel like there's much there <laughs> to make the grip size uh, bigger. But um, yeah, that's one thing I noticed with the Wilson as far as the other brands, I've had good success with a lot of them. I mean, like Chris was saying, they all pretty much have an adhesive background. So they're all pretty easy to put on, um, except for the the fairway where you have to put your own adhesive. But um, I like the Bab a lot. That one's really nice. A couple other ones that stood out were like the Prince and the Turner. Those ones kind of like that have that like dark brown color to them. Those seem to be pretty, uh, pretty supple when when wrapping them on the grip handle. So pretty easy application with those. I've had good results with the, I've never tried the Technofiber, but I've had good results with the uh, Vocal Leather Grip too. That was a, felt like a nice quality grip. And was that the, is that the Vocal in black? Is that the one? or? Is that um, I believe it came out in black. Yeah. But the one I hit was, it was a long time ago. It was, uh, it was tan. It was tan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Um, then last couple of questions. There's only a couple rackets on the market that come with a leather grip. As far as I remember, the RF ninety seven being one, and the Prince Phantom ninety three P. Yeah, Does that one comes with. And then oh. uh, the Dunlop the tour, the uh, Kevin Anderson one, the two hundred oh, yeah. CX tour, CX, right? Yeah, eighteen twenty. Yeah. The eighteen twenty that comes with leather. And then wait, is there another one? The Head Pro Tour? No. The Prince, um, the POG Prince Graphite. There Eversize. we go. Oh, the oversized. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. So there's a couple, but not many. And then are there any pros that are using leather grips without an overgrip and then oh, with wow. an overgrip? <laughs> yeah. With with uh, with half an overgrip? A oh, yeah. Of, a couple of the one handed back ends. I was going to talk about that earlier when yeah. Chris was talking about every now and then he likes he will he will put an overgrip on if it gets too, uh, too, too much moisture. But the couple popped into my head like Gasquet for sure, you know, only goes up enough to cover his one-hander and even Stan, Stan, the man has some leather grip exposure because he's just covering for the one hand. <laughs> Roger. 
obviously is using leather with the pro Wilson pro. Um, who else? Anyone else? That I, you can I can't of? think of anyone who plays just leather. Yeah. You know, I think you got to go back many years to <laughs> find that, that male or female out there that was playing just the leather. Maybe, maybe like in one of those exhibition matches where you got like, you know, some old time players out there. <laughs> Tracy Austin and her original racket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you'd be like, uh, what's her name? Uh, the one that plays with the glove on. And she's a Wilson. Uh, Billy Jean. Billy Jean. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen practice practice uh, sessions with Billy Jean and she's got a glove on out there. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. And now that like makes me think, are there any ladies out there that are using leather grips? Even with the over grip on top, I, I know there's a couple out there. I'm drawing blanks right now, trying to think of ones that I've seen with leather grips. I know there's a lot, definitely a ton of ATP players. You know, even Novak uses a, a leather under his over grips. Um, there's a ton of players out there that use them under their under the over grip. Shoot, I'm trying to think of the WTA players that I've seen though. I feel like maybe some of the ones that have like a little more flair to their game. I don't know. I could imagine that they would feel confident with leather grip. Do you remember if Beth, does Beth have, Beth and Max Sands, does she have leather under her, her grip? I don't know. When we did like the customization of, of a pure arrow for her uh, racket review, mm -hmm. it wasn't mentioned that she had one. Okay. Underneath. Maybe that's what she should try. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay, this is like a, one last silly-ish question, but I'm sure there are people out there. Uh, if I am a vegan, are there any synthetic grips close to, what's the closest thing to a leather grip feel without using leather? <laughs> you can say nothing. <laughs> you can say no options. There's nothing that replaces it, but <laughs> I feel like it's come up a few times. So I had to Yeah, ask. I mean, if you're, if you're an overgrip player, like you're not actually searching for the feel of the leather itself on your hand, like the way Chris plays it, then in that case, you're pretty much just going for the really firm feel. So you could either just go with like a really thin replacement grip. So something like the Prince Resi thin mm -hmm. or Wilson has like the feather thin. I think Turner has like the pro thin. Um, those are all good options, which will give you like a firmer feel, even though it's not going to be as firm as a, as a leather grip. And then another thing I've seen, or I've even tried it myself is actually just wrapping over grips on top of the palette. So I know I'm pretty sure one of our team T dub girls, Danielle Lau, she, I think uh, when Andy was coaching her, he was mentioning that she would do something like that, where she would get a bigger grip size and then mm -hmm. take the replacement grip off and play like a couple over grips on top of the palette. And I've tried that before when I've had rackets that were like five eights and I didn't want to play a five eights. I just took the grip off and wrapped a couple over grips. And that gives you a really firm feel and almost probably more connection to the racket than even with a leather grip. So, but going even deeper, that's going to, you know, you take off your, your replacement grip, you're making the racket less head light and you're also cutting down on some of the weight too. So there's other factors, but. Yeah. Boris Becker used to do that two gripsy over grips, which I don't think they're in business anymore, but anyway, he would play two over grips on a, on a naked pallet. Um, <laughs> and he could, you know, really like the feel of the, the bevels. Just don't make sure or make sure none of your uh, your grip staples are coming loose, man. You might end up <laughs> yeah. The shank in your hand. Yeah. Oh, that sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> Not to scare people away. Um, the other thing you could do is when you put a replacement grip on um, is, you know, the tighter you pull it um, when you're in applying it, the thinner it's going to get. And so if you want to get more of that feel of the bevels of the racket, um, yeah, just stretch the heck out of that thing as you're um, wrapping it around. The, the palette and then it'll make it thinner and you'll a firmer feel and you'll get closer to a leather that way. So if you're vegan, that's a, that's an option. Yeah. Nice. Are always looking out. <laughs> cool. Anything else to add about leather grips? No, if you've never tried one, give it a go. You can I think it's about a 10 gram increase in tail weight you're going to add <clears throat> to the racket. So expect a slightly beefier feel from the racket, but at the same time it's tricking the mind into making because it makes the head feel lighter because now you've added weight to the handle. So actually there's been rackets where they sometimes feel like they're a little sluggish coming around. You put a leather grip on and you've increased the weight, but now the racket comes around quicker because you've changed the balance. So um, yeah, expect a little bump up in weight um, 
and a lot more feel. Yeah. And I, I would just say, um, you know, over the years, um, I've kind of dialed in kind of, you know, the type of rackets that I feel like play best with a leather grip All of them. Uh, for me, as far as like, <laughs> what's that? All of them. Well, that, that, that's what I was saying. Like it, it used to be my MO was like, Oh yeah, Troy, you know, pretty much leather grip on everything and, and lead tape at three and nine. And, you know, it's kind of come to my senses over the years, but for me, I talked about this in previous podcasts, the leather grip does make the racket a little firmer feeling overall compared to like the synthetic, um, you know, material, the softer, squishier grip. So for me, um, I tend to like it on rackets that are kind of like in that mid 60 range stiffness typically, or, or lower. So typically kind of the medium stiffness to, to lower flex rating, um, rackets. Whereas for some of those really modern, really stiff beam rackets, maybe like a pure drive or, you know, maybe like a, a Yonex V core or something, those stiff rackets. Sometimes I, I've learned, I've kind of lost the the love for putting leather grips on those type of rackets, just because it makes those stiff rackets feel even more firm. So that's just something I'd add in there too, is think about kind of the comfort ish uh, factor of the, of adding a leather grip and making the racket feel firmer. But if you want to go even more depth, uh, adding weight to the racket kind of helps with, uh, with comfort and shock absorption. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there, but. Well, I'm going to go add a leather grip to my Babolat Pure Drive Tour now. <laughs> I really yeah, like string it. it at 75 pounds. <laughs> yeah. So when I played the Pure Drive Rotic back yeah. in the day, I had leather grips on those things. So they were up in the like low 13s, I think. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> a little weight I had on them. I'm here for it. There's a couple <laughs> new head rackets off, coming off, out. Uh, off air. Should... This is off air for editing, but <laughs> just had an ice pack on his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's from surfing. <laughs> Chris had an ice pack with shells and messed up shoulders. Don't listen to them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, thanks you guys so much for telling us all about the benefits of a leather grip. If anyone has any further questions, reach out. We are here to help. If you're intimidated about installing a leather grip, we're here to help. And our racket experts can always do that for you also. So thanks for listening. Thanks for checking out the benefits of a leather grip and happy hitting.